What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah, and I am with my guy, Big Nate Dog, over here. He's in the building, and this is another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Yes. I, I don't quite say it like Nate Dog. Nate, I hit him with it one time. <laughs> Let me Nate. tell you something. There you yeah, go. There yeah. you go. How you I been, man? It's, it's bad, man. Bad grammar get exposed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me it's tell you good. something. It's all good. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Yeah, last I'm, time I'm, we talked to you, you was on the road? Yes, I was. I was coming back from... Um, L.A., man, from Oxnard, California. Got here safely, man. It took me about, about 25 hours. It should have took me about 19 or 20, but I, I took my time and had fun and enjoyed the sights. Yeah, what, what, what's your, what is your thing? Like, what, what tip can you give everybody for hit, hitting the road? Because you, you stay on the road, and I, I'm good for about a good three hours, and then I got I to pass out for a minute. Just enjoy yourself. Okay. When you get out there, make sure you're well-rested before you take off. Yeah. And then if you, if you feel yourself getting a little sleepy, pull over. Okay. Test yourself, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you just pull over for 15, 20 minutes. Minutes, leave your air running, windows a little bit cracked, uh -huh. and go to sleep. You'll find yourself sleeping maybe 30 minutes, and sometimes it's two hours. On the side of a road. When, yeah, but when you wait, but no, it's, it's two minutes. <laughs> nah, no, don't pull on the side of the road. They got secure areas, All bro. Right. They have secure areas. Rest stops. You know, yes, stops. Don't do that. No. <laughs> That's pretty good, Zell. Nah. So, so, like, um, let me see here. So, like, my driving, what's the best way I can say this? Uh... No, not a combination. But like when I when I stop at a, at the store, okay, whatever right. convenience store that is, I'm gonna grab me some gummy worm, not grab some gummy bears, right? Uh, or really like the little life ring. I don't know what you right. call them, lifesaver rings. Right. Uh, I'm gonna grab me an energy drink, right? Some water, right? And that's all I need, right? right. But my wife, her combination is sunflower seeds, uh, some kind of energy drink, and like some funyuns. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your what's your, what's your giddy up? Um, I do do the do the coffee and the okay. cowboy cup. Um. Uh, I uh, eat peanuts. Okay, you know, peanuts. Yeah, I eat shells. Yeah. Shells. Yeah, peanut. Either way, it don't make a difference. Peanuts, mixed nuts, anything like that, or whatever. Because I'm a diabetic, so I don't want to go too far with the sugar. Because yeah, if yeah. I go too far with the sugar, yeah. then I'm a, I'm a hype up and kind of get yeah. lightheaded, yep. and then that's a bad combination. You can't drive like that. We'll have a whole show about that at some yeah. point. Talking, you know, my daughter's type one diabetic. Yeah, so yeah. We got yeah. we got some conversations about that. Definitely, okay. we need to bring her home. Then yeah, we'll huh? do that. We're gonna and do just that. see what from her perspective as a little baby girl, love it. how she feel about that situation. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. So peanuts, Mike, that gave me flashbacks. My grandpa used to buy these big, <laughs> I think it was, was it five pound yeah, bags of yeah, peanuts back yeah, in the day? Yeah. It come in like some kind of, I don't even know what it came in. Burlap sacks. Burlap uh, sacks, yeah, exactly. Burlap sacks. I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah, he, did he get them already roasted? Or would he roast them? And some people will boil them. I used to do the boiled peanuts, but that ain't a good combination if you drank a lot of water because after about a couple of hours, <laughs> you're going to see that one way or another. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yes, sir. You gonna smell it's, it's that coming too. up. You gonna it's smell. coming about you. <laughs> One way or another, you gonna smell it or see it. That's all bad. <laughs> we don't need those issues. You didn't have no peanuts today, did you? No. Nah, all nah. right, we good. All right, y'all, we safe. We are right. safe. All right, man. So, so we just talking about Nate Dog coming back from from California. He went out there to Oxnard. We did some things together. Um, now, nah, 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 I'm sorry, Nate. We got we got to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we tried to, to come get around up. it, but we try to get around it, y'all. We try to give y'all a little breather. But we can't give you no breathing room. Uh, uh, some things need to be addressed. And what we're referring to is the Dallas Cowboys. We're always going to touch on them. But it's not going to be just a Dallas Cowboys show. But we are here in D-Town, and we, we have to address some of the matters at hand. And the matters at hand are they just finished playing the Denver Broncos. Yes. For preseason game number one. Now, most people write off the preseason. Most people just disregard it. You know, it's practice reps. It's the beginning of the year. You try to figure out your team. How do you how do you feel about the preseason just in general, Nate? How, how do you how do you approach those games? It, it depends on where you're at in your career and okay. what you're trying to accomplish. That's a good point. As a rookie, you you wide open. You 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 let the coaches tell you in everything that you do, from studying to practicing to getting ready for games to back up. Okay. You know, you you got to have your feet on the pedal, and you got to be going 90, going north. And that's how I would approach it as a rookie. As a veteran guy, I'm working on things. I'm already established. What what was my weakness last year? What did everybody key on? I'm trying to adjust to the NFL because they have adjusted to me. Mm. You know, so it's just, it's just where you at in your career, how you should respond. Should any rookies – be relaxed in the preseason, regardless None. of your draft status. None. 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 No exceptions. From from the from the 30th guy that they have signed as a free agent yeah. to the first round pick, 
they should be wide open. They should be like, the coaches should be like, okay, right here, you got to kind of back down, you know. So you should, the coaches should have to pull them back. Yeah. Yes, Even if you're a first-round pick. Even if you're a first-round pick. How, how, I mean, how do you feel? I mean, I wasn't drafted, so yeah. I had no other choice but to be wide open. Well, you know, when I was drafted, I was hurt. Right. So I had a lot to prove. Right. I, I hadn't played in a long time. So, <laughs> I, you know, I was coming off of playing, you know, what, October? Right. And then I didn't play again until August. Wow. So, yeah, I had a lot to prove. I didn't right. have no no buffer <laughs> to sit out right. there and just be coasting. Right. You know, kind of like cruising over there. Mm. Um, so how did you – before we get specific uh – -huh. I want, I want the 30,000 feet view. Right. All right. How do you perceive the Cowboys' performance this, this past week against the Denver Broncos? Uh, slow, lethargic. Mm. Mm. Uh, tempo was way off base. Trash? Yeah. Uh, not, not, not a step above that. It's recyclable. You know, yeah. It was <laughs> it, they, their tempo, especially offensively, and we saw this with versus our defense yeah. in practices okay. during the training camp. We saw it, you saw it, and, and really told us about it in the practice against Denver, uh, Denver yeah. that Thursday. We, we, I don't know if it's arrogance, uh, don't understand, or just don't know what tempo they should be at and what they're trying to achieve, and it showed right in the game. Tempo was very, very bad offensively. What, what do you think? I know you say, you know, you don't know. There's a lot of things that can go into that. And I'm not, I'm not one to make excuses. You're not one to make excuses. That's mm -hmm. why, you know, we always tell people, let me tell you something before we hit them with the real. <laughs> yeah. I can't make excuses for performances like that. Now, it wasn't all bad. I don't want to see – we're not going to sit up here and bash them, but there are some things that have to be addressed in order for yes. them to hit the season that they want to attain. And, yes, it's the preseason. Yes, it was week one. These guys are coming from Dallas. Mm -hmm. Then they go to Oxnard. They're there for a few weeks. Right, living it up, California IA, 75 degrees every day, beautiful, nice little ocean breeze. Right. And then all of a sudden they throw their stuff in the bag and they up and go to Denver. Now all of a sudden they can't breathe. It's 98 degrees at practice. And you know, they're they're playing against all pro defense alignment, you know, in practice environment, Peyton Manning walking on the sideline, John Elway, Terrell Davis. Yes, sir, John Elway, my boy. Ooh, I mean, hey. you know. That's my boy. That's I, right I got there? Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, you call John. John going to answer his phone. No way. Oh, yeah. John, he going to answer his phone. I'm a big Jeep man. Okay. I believe in, you know, the, the Jeep brand and the Wrangler and all of that. And so, hey, hey, Jeep, I need you guys to understand <laughs> that. You guys have opportunity to do a nice little sponsorship right here with Nate Newton. I said, Stan, let me tell you something. Jeep yeah, let me tell you Clinton. something, bro. Let me tell you something. He'll answer his phone. And he told me, he said, hey, come on and buy a Jeep from me. I, I should have did that about six, seven years. I should have went on up there and got me a Jeep at the right price. You, you definitely should have. Yeah. So, so all the star powers out there can't the practice field and, you know, NFL networks there, you know. For real? Oh, yeah. They were set up in the corner. You know, Denver Broncos were recording. You know, we're doing the Dallas Cowboys are doing a live broadcast. Right. So you got all this stuff going on, right? You get to the, you get your buses drive up. You get dropped off and kicked out the bus. You're in an environment that you don't you never been there before. You know, you're you're a rookie and you don't know what the heck's going on. And and all of a sudden go out there and perform. Is that an wow. excuse? Uh, nah. Okay. No, nah, it's not. A, it, it may be an excuse for a young guy. Okay. Especially a guy that haven't played in front of massive crowds. Uh, Marquise Bell, maybe okay. we could use that. Okay. But uh, for other free agents from smaller schools, making use that. And if you're not used to the environment, the, the, the altitude, uh, you know, the lack of air, yeah. you know, you may you're get feel tired, yeah, you're but feel that it. shouldn't stop your effort hmm. because you can always go to the sideline and say, I can't breathe, and they're going to put some air in you. Yeah. So you still should have a better tempo, I think. All right. So they get there. They don't have a great practice, right? A lot of fights and a lot of other stuff that we can address. But now all of a sudden you show up to the stadium, you know, and we're going to speak from the, you know, we're gonna today we're gonna get to the perspective of a, of a rookie, right? right? But right now we're talking about this Dallas Cowboys in general. You know they didn't put up a good performance. They had a lot of penalties. I think it was seventeen for one twenty. Yeah, it was like somewhere that. around 19, there. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of yardage. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned it on the air. I was in the broadcast booth. I mentioned yeah, that. Great job, man. Thank you. Thank great you. Great job. A lot of people talking about you, man. That's awesome, man. It's wow. working, working, Nate. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mentioned on the air that. Mike McCarthy looked Looney Tunes mad. Yeah. I don't know if anybody understood what that meant, but, right. you know, Looney Tunes, you get that yeah. pop in the head, but <laughs> yeah. he was about to lose it. Right. He's about to lose it on the sideline. And I think mainly because, and you can speak to this a lot, because we talked about it last year at the broadcast, the penalties, man. 
The pre snap was killing them. Uh, not knowing where you're at and guessing. And not understanding what is happening to you, and it all, and, you know, and, I, and you'll hear me say, until they fix it, uh, the speed, the speed of the game, the the picking up your tempo. You gonna hear me say that a lot, you know. So but now, when you say that, and let's get let's, now we can start. Let's start digging in there because we're not yeah. gonna. The Cowboys didn't play well. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and fast forward. They got the Chargers coming up next. They have another opportunity, another week of practice. Not really, because I heard the practice schedule is pretty lax over these next. It's Nate. My understanding is that they don't have any padded practices. I believe leading up to the Chargers, and but the Chargers are padded. I'm pretty sure they are. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm they good are. with that because I know that they don't have anything leading up to that. Yeah, I understand yeah, that. So, so it's gonna be pretty lax, and like sort of the time that they hit the Chargers practice field is gonna be their first time really putting pads back on since they played their last. So they should be game. ready to go. Physically. Because they're back in the same altitude, yeah, back, back in the in, same yeah. almost weather. just going to be a little bit hotter. Yeah, they're being lighter. still in La La Land, you know, an hour, yeah. hour south of Oxnard. Right, it's going to be um, a little bit hotter. Yeah, so they should be cool. So we'll put this behind us. Cowboys didn't play well, but we're going to start getting diving into the specifics of, you know, from the perspective of the rookies and the second-year guys. Okay. All right, from the rookies and the second-year guys. And we're going we're gonna to hit it right off the bat, Nate, because I know you, you're anxious. All right? right. You're, so, you're so anxious <laughs> like Genuine right now. Right, right. Tyler Smith, this year's first round draft pick, the guy who was who was drafted to come in and replace Mr. Connor Williams that everybody in Dallas Cowboys Nation was so disappointed in. I mean, Dallas Cowboys Nation was disappointed in Connor Williams. He was a local local guy, went to Capel yeah. High School, went to the University of Texas, came in stout, you know, 6'5", 310 pounds, solid, can get out and move on the edge, you know, but has struggled a little bit inside the box, you know, holding, not right. moving his feet, you know, over, really aggressive, strong guy. Right. So you get rid of him. Yes, we did. Now he's the center in Miami. He's a starting center in Miami. in Miami and got some right. big boy money. Right. Right? Wasn't good enough for the Cowboys. Right. So you get rid of him because of the holding issues. You get rid of him because of his inability or um, unwilling, the lack of willingness to move his feet, whatever it might have right. been, right? All the issues that really coincided with that position. And then you go out and you draft his replacement. Yes, that's, their, that's, that's everybody's expectation. Tyler, Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith, a, a left tackle who they're going to use as a left guard. And then if, when Tyron's not around or Tyron needs to step out for whatever reason, he'll fill in for him. Right? That's, we'll that's we'll the, see. That's the expectation. We'll, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. First preseason game pops up. How many holding penalties did he have, Nate? Did he have two? He had two for sure. And had, could have had more? If they had they called it? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. All right, here we go. This dude plays with no feet. Tell people what that means, Nate. He he does not position himself well with his feet. He does not place his head in the proper place on a player. And let's say this is the center. Give give him a scenario, Nate. This is the center. Okay. I am the guard next to, to this center. Okay. We're going this way. Going to the left. Instead of me getting my head in the armpit of my center because I may have to take over that block, mm. I'm slow off the ball, and now I'm on the rear end of my center. So, so you're so you sta- you staggered too yeah. much. And so if my center let this guy go too soon, he's going to split us. Yeah. Instead of me being tight. Hip to hip. Where he won't. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, no seams. And, and, and he... And it's all about the head placement, which you reminded me of that. But I'm so big on feet yeah. placement. If you're not going to put your feet in the proper place, run, wise, or pass, I have a guy that's sitting on my outside shoulder. All I have to do is take a six-inch step back, sit back, punch. Well, he reaches over. He's aggressive. Yeah, he reaches over with his hands because in college, he was so used to just ragdolling people yeah. and throwing people around. You can't do that. Yeah. You you are silverback, but these guys are silverback plus one because <laughs> they got they they, they understand technique. Correct. And now you're reaching like this. What does the ref see? Yeah. If your hands in here, the ref can't see what you're doing. But in order for your, your hands, hands to be inside. out here because your feet is not moving. It's a holding, bro. Now you now you may be strong enough to rip, to rip mm-hmm. him into you, but it's too late. The ref see your Pulling. hands. Yeah. He see all that cloth that you got 
and it, and, and it hurt him. And then one play, everybody was going right. The, center, the, the left guard, the left tackle had a single block. Everybody else was turning right. He turned left, and his guy ran right past him. And, yeah, and I game, remember that. That was on a three-step. Yeah, in the game, that could have been disastrous. Yeah, it could have. In a real game with a starting middle linebacker that understood what just happened, your quarterback was going to get hit regardless. Whether he would have yeah. got a penalty, whether the defensive guy would have got a penalty, he, would like, he wasn't going to pass with that free shot. I was going to mention that on the broadcast. We were working a three-man booth, but so but right. babe, babe took that replay. Right. But one of the things I was going to say was that on a three-step, you can't – actually, I think I would double back on it. Right. You can't – your eyes can't be all over the place on a three-step. And I think, I think he was overwhelmed. I think he was overwhelmed. Yeah. Nate, and, and regardless of where you're drafted, right. your draft status is based upon what you've shown in college – your draft status is based upon, you know, in terms of what you've accomplished. Right. Your draft status is also based upon your potential. Right. So the combination of what you've shown us and what your potential is, that dictates your draft status. What people tend to forget, it doesn't matter what your draft status is, you're still a rookie. Yes, you are. You're still a rookie. And no matter how high your hopes might be for this individual, he still has a lot to learn. Yes. So with that... You have to give him a little bit of what we call grace. Yeah. Right? And we're going to yeah. talk about more than just him, but there has to be there has to be grace given. Simply because of the fact that we come from a sense and coaches come from a, a position of understanding that there's a learning curve to this. All right? The things that you're talking about, technique. Yeah, those are things he could have learned in college. Right. But let's understand that they drafted him knowing that he had some of the same issues that Connor Williams had. Right. Right? Some of the things that oh, you he led, He led the power five in, in holding. Absolutely. So <laughs> yeah. these aren't things that are just showing up for the first time. Right. Right? So these are things that they know that they're going to have to coach him into. So though you might not be happy with his performance – you understand his performance because right. these are things that he struggles with. Cowboys Nation has to understand, don't hit the panic button. He's going to work his way out of it because the coaches drafted him knowing that these were his vices. But you know what? They better hurry up. <laughs> this ain't – when I first got into the league, we did eight weeks. Mm. Then they dropped it down to six weeks and then five. Uh, it's three weeks to the first game. Uh, There's gonna be right now – Right now, Connor McGovern is ahead of him. Yes. Due to the two holdings. Yep. You're going to trust this guy going into a season where you have sat on a podium on open day ceremonies as a head coach saying, we, we will not have that this year, especially the pre stop penalties. Are things leading to lazy feet yeah. or being out of position? Because we coach speed. Now, he talked, this is what Coach yeah, McCarthy, yeah. we talk speed. We talk about playing at a high tempo, which we haven't seen yet offensively. Yeah. And I'm not saying we can't get there, Isaiah. And as a rookie, I can tell you how I struggled. You know, but it's, wow. Tell us how you struggled, Nate. I'm glad I, you brought that up. Tell us, <laughs> because I, I don't want people to just be bashing on the man. Yeah. You know, he had a rough day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a rough day, and he had a learn. That's a learning day for him, right? Welcome, hello, rookie. Right. Hello, rookie. Hello, rookie. And that's not even the real hello, rookie, because yeah. if he happens to be in the game week one, he won't get a hello, rookie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay, yeah. there's, there's, <laughs> these, these, this is the, these are the, uh, I don't know. This is kind of like playing Mortal Kombat yeah. back in the day. You say yeah. you got to work your way up the little chart. Yeah. These are the guys at the low level. These yes. are the low level guys. Wow. And, and I think that's the reason why Cowboys fans get frustrated because they're like, the guys that you're playing against, you should be able to dominate. Right. With right. your talent, you can dominate them. Right. With your technique, has to be sound. Yes, it does. People have to understand that. So yeah. give people a peek behind the veil, Nate, because I'm a, I, I can tell you my struggles as a rookie. I had my issues as well. But so, tell them, you know, as a young offensive lineman coming in the league, what are some of the things that you struggle with? Well, first of all, Isaiah, and I, and I tell people this all the time, is is when you are coming from Florida and m and I've, I had only faced – one or two defenses. All, all it was, every game was, we're going to face a 4-3, four down linemen. Uh -huh. You know, hardly no overs and unders. Yep. Always going to face a 3-4, three, a three, four, nose guard, two defensive ends or two tackles, whatever. And, and it, it few variations. Yeah. So when I got into the NFL and they went over <laughs> to an under, yeah. strong side to weak side, depending on the tight end. Yeah. And then they had a... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, what in the world is going on? Yeah. So the mental I, aspect. I, yeah, the mental aspect blew me away and it made me hesitant. Mm. But what I decided to do is, you know what? I may be wrong, but I'm going to go hit somebody. For sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know. I'm going to be 100% <laughs> wrong. So, and then the snap count, the variations of snap counts, I had never heard. The hard count, a hard two, meaning hut, hut, yeah. hut. Fluctuations, you know? yeah. tone, and so pace. I never, and, I, and I continuously jumped outside. And I was deep into the league before I even understood what the hard counts were all about mm-hmm. and the fluctuations of the voices and stuff like that because I was just used to running off the ball at Florida and m So that got me. So I had to go a longer route. Well, I went to the U.S. of mm. and learned a little bit of this. Fortunate that I had Fred Dean that uh, played with the Hogs when they won that Super Bowl. Okay. Left guard, he's, he was a starter, and he taught me a lot. So yeah. so before you get too far, and I just, yeah. just want to hit on this so people understand, the importance, as a former quarterback and you as a former right. offensive lineman, the people need to understand when these quarterback changes take place, in the, especially in preseason, right? Yes. These young offensive linemen like Tyler Smith trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Ball. Yeah, but Josh Ball, who's yeah. pretty much a rookie. Right. right? He's a second-year guy who got drafted last year by the Cowboys to be that swing tackle that everybody's always talking about for the Cowboys. But last year, he had to sit out because of injury. Now, all of a sudden, he's in the fold, and it was his first game, so you pretty much had two rookies in the game for most of the first half. You had had Tyler Smith at left guard, and you had Josh Ball at left tackle. So that whole left side was rough. (laughs) (laughs) Rough. Rough. Wow. (laughs) But I want the... Some of the pre-snap penalties, the offside, I mean, the the false starts, we saw a number of those. Yes. People are like, oh, man, come on, sit in there, do the right... What Nate just talked about, understand this, the... When you have quarterback changes, maybe Tyler Smith and, and you know has been. I know Josh Ball has been rotating in there with the ones. Well, Dak Prescott has a tempo. He has a, a he has rhythm, a, he has a yeah. rhythm. He has a tone. And as a you know as offensive lineman, you know it's like it's like it's like it's like own. I don't, don't want to say is a reference to like a dog listening to his, his, his owner, but it's like that kind of chemistry where it's, it's like it's, it's simply it's, that. It's you like that. Said, you know yeah. it's. You're listening to your. That's your commander. That's right. your commander. Right. Right. So you you are in sync. You know how he flows. You know how he talks. You know you know the fluctuation. You know the hard counts. How he's gonna. Ah, you know. You yeah. know the bass. You know all those things matter. Right. So when you hear this crowd noise, it doesn't bother you because you know your yeah. guy's voice. Right? right. It's like a doggone baby when he hears mama's yeah. voice. It's like yeah. your eyes go. Like they know where you're at. Right. When you change the quarterback, all of a sudden, same offensive line, new quarterback. Tempo's different. And you have, it ain't it ain't them guys you've been practicing against for the last two weeks. Yeah. It's a different. So you're already on edge. Yeah. You're yeah. on edge yeah. already. It's a you, different guy. You're already guessing, like Nate yeah. just said, talking about his time in, coming into the league. I'm looking at the fronts. What front are they running? This is not what we've been seeing for the last three weeks in camp. <laughs> right, right. This right. is not the Dallas Cowboys defense line. This right. isn't Dan Quinn's defense. Right. right. They got these other dudes up here. Uh, what are they doing? Okay, who is this? What is his skill set? Is he going to rush me? Is he going to try to cross my face? Are they running a stunt? Oh, right. by the way, I got I got Cooper rushing here now and Ben DiNucci, and right. they sound totally different than Dak. They sound different. Their hard counts aren't as aren't as aggressive, you know, or or maybe they're a little bit too high on the tones. Of, right. You know, the there's so many different elements. I just want people to understand this, and I'm not making excuses. This is just the reality of sports and what people don't necessarily see nor understand about how it can affect somebody's play. Right. Because when you see a false start, you're not going to think about all these different. Most people don't understand that all this is behind the curtain. All right, so I want to get that out the way. The performance, he had holdings, okay? High expectations for him. Can he learn the footwork and the technique that you're talking about, Nate, to help him become the starter that the Dallas Cowboys hope for him to be? He has to work overtime. He, he, Off the clock. Yeah, he has to go out on the field, set up him some dummies, uh, uh, hit the hit the goalposts. I've seen guys, me myself, have done it where I, I, I have aiming points and I and I and I put my first two steps. I do a hundred and boom, my first two steps mm. to make sure I get my in my hands. I don't even use my hands. 
I mean, I, I move them. For sure. But I don't even use my hands. You don't want to rely I'm on I'm trying them. to get, this is the guy right here. Yep. I'm moving my mic away a little bit. This is the guy right here. I'm trying to get two steps. Boom, boom, boom. As yeah. quick as I can outside of that. Just as quick. Because I'm starting to get myself, I got to start working with a tempo. Yeah. I got to start working with a pace. And I have to know the plays. Yeah. When you don't know the plays and you got people screaming and you got a quarterback and it's all chaos. of a sudden it's slow. You're a tick slow. Mm -hmm. In this league here, a tick slow will get you hurt. I mean, we're talking about yeah. fractions of a second. Second, yes. And so he has to pick up his urgency with his feet, with his head, with his head placement, and then his hands will be an asset. Yeah. Right now, he he his hands is his whole world. Mm. And so that's what's hurting him. Josh Ball oh. does not work. He said, I'm gonna go to Josh. Oh. He does not work well in space. He does. He overset a guy. You you even spoke on that, how he overset a guy by mere inches. By mere inches. And that guy blew him to the inside. And he couldn't even recover. When all he had to do was simply sit. Sit inside. Wow. It was too much. All he had to do was pop up. It, so, pop up. So That's, I wow. want people to understand this. And right? I'll give people a little bit of understanding of the frustrations and the struggles I had as a rookie. But to that point about Josh Ball, you know, what you're talking about, all you had to do was sit inside. Yeah. That's erring on the side of safety. Yes. That's all it is. That is all it is. There's no different than coming up to a red light. You're about to make a right turn. There's a car coming. You can turn in front of that car. You can turn it. Just stop. Or you can just chill for another two seconds. Second. Yeah. Let that car go by, and you know how you don't have any kind of worries. Right, so what you're saying is all he had to do was sit on the inside sit up. and make him run the long way. Right, but he, when you try to be just right. And you're overset a lot of times. And now you find yourself in a predicament. Right. Right, so that's what happened to Josh Ball a lot, and it showed up in practice the week leading up to it. I, yeah. I talked about it in, in a live broadcast at practice. He, it was the same thing. He looked lost. He, <laughs> they need to go get a guy. Yeah. I, I, I. I'm going to stand here. This, this is our podcast. We can say what we need to say. Yeah. Today, and, and the thing about it is, all these people that are thinking that Tyler Smith going to go to the right mm -hmm. tackle or the left tackle, you got more, better athletes mm. who going to dance and play with you a little bit more from the outside. And you not, and you with your lazy feet. He has support right now on both sides of him. Yes. Right Thank now, you. as a guard, you, all, yeah. you always have support on both sides of him. Thank you. When you get on the tackle, like a Josh Ball, right? He's out there in no man's land. Right. And you and psychologically, you try to make, just, I have to be just right. right? I have to be just right. But when sometimes when you don't have that experience, you don't have that technique, right. you find yourself in a bad spot. I remember when I was a rookie, Nate, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I had right. no idea what I was doing. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was a young, you know, drafted quarterback that they were transitioning and trying to turn into a receiver. I knew nothing about receiver. Not a now, now doggone on. thing. This after you turned down a first round pick in baseball. Why, why you gotta bring that up, man? <laughs> why you gotta, why you gotta bring that up? He man? turned down a first round pick in baseball. Go ahead on. I, I want you to finish. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you I still, something. I still feel yeah, that, Nate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, tell, I feel that too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you should have took the baseball. Yeah, I still be playing. Um, so I didn't know what I was doing. Like, right. to the point, I think I talked about this when PC was on a couple weeks ago. First day, I get out there, Nate, I'm wearing every pad that you can put on. <laughs> Knee pads, butt pads, thigh pads, hip pads. I had wow. every pad on. And all the receivers were looking at me like, what in the heck is this doggone dude doing? I look like the water boy out there. Right. right. At receiver. <laughs> <laughs> and so for me, stepping into the games as a rookie, I was lost, man. I knew the playbook. I knew the playbook, but I wasn't allowed to just play. Right. You know, to your point, you know, you're thinking about the fronts and all the different, how, how different things are. So your eyes are wide open, as you right. mentioned, right? Your eyes are wide open, not technique-wise, because you, you're sound in that regard, but the psychological side of things, right? The, you had so much to digest. There's so much happening. Guys are shifting. Linebackers moving over, you know, moving over shades. Is this my guy now? Is this his guy? There's a lot. I was doing that at the receiver position because my perspective was different. You know, I'm used to being in the center of the field and looking out. Right, right. You wow. know, so I was yeah. able to digest information that way evenly. Mm. I right. could see where the safeties were at. I could see where the leverage was at for right. the corners, linebackers, all those things. Now, all of a sudden, I'm on the outside and I'm looking in. Totally different. Totally different. Not only that, I don't even know how to stand as a receiver. 
So I'm out there. It's just I'm, I'm looking at To and and PC and and TG and all these guys. How right. are they? How are they standing? Oh shoot, they all stand different. TG look like he's in the back of a Cadillac just chilling. Right. You know what I'm saying? To right. looks like he's on his front leg. PC looks relaxed, and I'm stressed because I'm just trying to figure out. Regardless, forget what, what the play, what the quarterback just called. How do I stand? Right. Am I on the ball? You know, do I? Uh, crap. But you know what? Now this is what I'm understand. And this is a guy who you just, hey man, you need to get back. You need to move forward. You need to do this. And you go out there in one position that Lost. you used to co- used to be the puppeteer, man, where you command Facts. three positions. Now you can't get one. Listen here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was different, man. It was different. It was different. But you know, I yeah, so I'm thinking about all those things. I'm thinking about my foot. Is my foot gonna hold up, right? Coming right. off to my major foot injury. Okay, so I'm okay. thinking about my injury, I'm thinking about my alignment. I'm thinking about how do I how do I even get a release? Like, what does a release look like before I can even run a route? Okay, now that I've got my release, okay, it, am I doing it right? So I had so many question marks as I'm playing. I look like right. one of them doggone little little memes with all these right. question marks around his head. And now the general public had no idea. Because the general public sees me and says, oh, you're a professional athlete. You're supposed to be the best in the world. Physically. Right. Physically, right. yes, I am one of the best in the world. I can do whatever <laughs> I want to at that time in my life. Right. I, was a, I was a specimen at that time, you know? Right, right, right. But because of my mental and my lack of experience, at not only in the league but also at that position, to your point, I was slow. Right? It caused right. me to play slow. It caused me to not be able to utilize my my athleticism because I'm thinking so much. Right. Right. And it really brought me down in the, in the whole psychological thing in terms of when I was got done with practices and games and stuff like, you know, we will talk about mental health at one point in time. The the new um, uh, mind, I think it was mind games. Right. Is right. the, the new documentary. Um, that from the Dallas Cowboys, the Deep Blue, and I was I was a part of that, and really good. If you guys haven't che- haven't checked that out yet, uh-huh. you know the Rob Phillips and Rocks, all those guys, they did an amazing job with it. But you know your old teammate Charles Haley talked about some of the right. some of the struggles that he had, and everything seemed so you know oh jolly good, and hey I'm good I'm good, but on the inside it's like dude I'm struggling. Wow. You know I was freaking struggling, and I was depressed and you know, lost and had no identity. And I was trying to figure myself out. Do I belong here? Like all these question marks are going on. So I say all that to say, I could understand some of these rookies and I am willing to be patient to see their development yes. and not judge them based off of just one of this one occurrence. Right, right. right. Because I understand that as a rookie, I had those same struggles. Right, right. As a rookie, with, you had those same they, struggles. Uh, yes. Right? So we can come from a place of understanding. The general public, we have to help them a little bit. Yeah, if, if I was a first-round pick, I wouldn't have got cut. I would have been on the same team getting that understanding. <laughs> but I was not a first-round pick, so I got cut. Uh, yeah. So I hope that that helps people be a little bit more understanding as much as, uh, as fans are, I want you guys to just, just, just take the emotion out of it, put on your analyst hat, and have a sense of understanding and, and, and empathy for these guys. Give them a couple games. Okay, well, how long does that last? A couple That's games. It. A couple games, Nate. You, you, you someone after the Chargers game. Chargers game, you need to have an understanding that these guys have improved. Right. Now, you're not going to see the finished product. Right. Nowhere near the finished product. The finished product is going to – you never you never see the finished product. Even Hall of Famers, they they still didn't have a finished product. They were always working to get better. So, But what you want to see is you want to see that improvement. Yes. You want to see those flags stay in the, in the, in the doggone waistband you see of the, a referee. A sense of urgency, head placement, yes. foot placement. Yes. You Realize, wanna, okay, if I'm going to get better, this is the two things that – the one thing that I can work on – it's my head placement, Correct. My foot placement. Whatever Coach Philbin tells them, you need to see it show up on game day. Yeah. And it should be evident that their coach got off in their tail right. about it. No right. different. Let's talk about some of the positive things we saw. Second year guys, Nation Wright has some really good plays in terms of him coming up and being physical. Right. Now, everybody's going to talk about the plays that he gave up in the passing game. Those are things that Al Harris will work on. But one element of his game that he needed to improve on was his physicality. Yes. He was 
I remember you told one one play where he was perfect and he got a whole. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. He didn't have to do it. He his once hands that were too fly, sticky. Oh man! Oh, he was all over this dude, and that shook him a little bit. Yes, it did. So where well, he didn't, you know, he what didn't, I'm now, now yeah. he's questioning. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Wow. No, but, but but he's right there. Yeah, he's he's yeah. right there, and right. and I and I and I bring him up as an example because coverage wise, like you said, he was good until that one call. Then he was like, "Oh crap, I can't do that no more." Right, I can't do that no more. So now right. you're guess now you're second guessing your natural athletic ability, which goes back to what you said. Yeah. Make sure you're just a tick slow. Yeah. So now all of a sudden they run a rubber out in the end zone. You try to get your hand up. <sighs> Right, the ball's coming. I don't get my head around because I'm so concerned about do I do I push yeah. him? Do I get my head? So now you question yourself and you, you end up playing outside of yourself and it doesn't end up well. Right. But the element that wasn't there last year, we see the improvement. He's coming up and he's hitting guys now. The run stoppage ability for a cornerback is huge in this in, in this, this defense. defense yes, yes. Deron Bland. Bro, I was wondering was you gonna I, I wondering was you gonna bring him up. He outplayed all the listen young here. guys, just listen, by my opinion. Listen here. Surprise the heck out of me. He did. Surprise the heck out of me. Because, and this is why people should not put a lot of weight on camp. Camp does not show you the whole story. Right. Because there's no tackling. That's right. There's no tackling in camp. So the most physical aspect of the game of football, you don't get to see. That's, That's right. Not on display. That's right. Tagging wow. off, thudding up, all that stuff doesn't doesn't equal what's going to show up on game day. That young man showed up on game day, and my eyes were like, doggone. I, my eyes were wide. I said, who is this cat? Oh, I, I watched him in practice, you know, trying to do some things. He Especially early in practice before they uh, before they got to really hit, and he, he would be in place. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm, I'm looking at him, and I... He was shocking. That was shocking. He Pleasantly. outplayed all the uh, young guys. He looked like a vet. Yes, he outplayed the young guys. He man. looked. He looked comfortable. What does that mean, though, Isaiah? From a from a cornerback receiver, what does that mean? It means from he's gonna get better looks this time coming up, or he should move up on the depth chart. I think he's gonna face a greater challenge this week. Right. Just, just a whole the whole team is gonna face a greater challenge. The Chargers right. are a better team. Yes. Chargers are a better team on paper than Denver, and I yeah. think they have more depth. Yes. Yeah. Right? So we weren't talking about starters. We weren't talking about all pro guys last week. We are talking about second, third, fourth string guys, guys that are trying to make it. Well, the Chargers' second, third, fourth string guys are— I Like our defense. Our yeah, defense there's— second, third, Yeah, I mean— Second team defense is starters. So, like, Chase yeah. Daniels, the backup for the Chargers, he's right. been around the league for 10 years. Plus, yeah. you know, this is not a regular second string guy. He's not a Cooper Rush. Right, He's, right. A, he's a veteran quarterback, you <laughs> right, know, and then right. you got other guys behind him. So, you're going to face a greater challenge this week. So, I would love to see it show up again, but it gave me a boat of confidence— knowing that this kid this kid showed up you know and as we look towards this weekend's uh game right i, I know this is today's thursday so we're looking at, at this weekend's game on saturday well how, how, how are you feeling about this nate how are you feeling about the charge we're not gonna talk about them too much but we just want to get people just, a preview just, just let me tell you something let me, let me, <laughs> I, I, you know even though this is a day by show and uh, a girl, Julie Dobbs, tabbed this. I, 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 yeah. I just had a little deal with her about yeah. when we was opening up before, you know, we yeah. thought it is, you know, the, great, the greatness of Isaiah. Uh, I, I spent like 20, I tried to not say, let me tell you. <laughs> now you got on it, Nate. Say, let me tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> this dude, these two dudes, it's two dudes that's going to define the Chargers. Hmm. Tell him, hold, on, hold on, before you say that, Nate, before you say that, this, this preseason is no longer four games. That's right. The preseason is now three games. Yes. Game one, you see no starters. That's right. Game three, you're definitely not going to see any starters. Right. Game two, do you see starters? Yeah, you're going to see a quarter, maybe a quarter and a half. They got to have something. Yeah, they got to have something. And you just, just pray that they don't get injured. Yeah, and the wet, they, you know, wet, they whistle, man. So. So, so the whistle that's about to get wet. Yeah, yeah. Khalil Mack. Yes, sir. Joey Bosa. Two guys. I, I know one of them probably sit on the left side of the room and the other one probably sit on the right side of the room. Joey Bosa's right in. And, 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 but I'm just saying, however it is, they sitting there, Isaiah, mm. saying in their mind, wherever I've been, I've been the best player and I've been the motor guy. Wherever they've been, am I, am I wrong? No. They've been the best player 
and they've been the motor guy. So I know they're trying to coexist, saying, yeah, bro, good job, good job. But I know they're saying, I'm going to lead this, this defense with my sacks, mm. with the harassment of quarterbacks. We need for our practices, and I'm not talking about no games. We need for our two practices to be high tempo, very com- very combative. Yeah. And what I mean by combative, be a little bit more than competitive. Okay. You know, I ain't saying you gotta fight nobody, but what coach uh my, my co- offensive line coach used to tell me, I need you to be combative. Okay. That means within the competition, yeah. you, you, close to, you close to throwing some we, blows. Just like, just like Terrence Steele yeah. last week. Yeah, you got to be close to throwing blows. Okay. And you have to finish okay. with good technique. See, this is where you love our right guard, Martin, and this is where you love our left tackle, Smith, mm. because they are – in that mode, I'm going to be technique sound at the edge of being combative. What's their approach to this week? Those two guys, those two all-pro offensive linemen They're, coming off a week that this offensive line just had, what is their approach? Because they most likely are going to get some reps, at least in practice. Yeah. They, what they're thinking is, it's time for me to get ready for the season. Yeah. Uh, it's time for me to be technique sound. It's time for me to show these young guys – what it looks like to go against premium guys. Do they set the tone? They have to. They, that's why I said it's, it's about being combative. Tyron Smith yeah. versus Khalil Mack this week. Yeah. Yeah. And still got his hands full. Still got his hands. Let me tell you, man, Joey <laughs> Bosa, wait, hey, from Ohio State. Boy, they, they okay, okay. Let's go to the Ooh. second level. Kyle Benoit from New yeah. England. He plays there now. You know what, man? And I hate that because. Anybody that played for the Seahawks or anybody that played for New England, this dude going to know everything about him. Listen here. Hey. <laughs> are those your two fa- favorite? I like the – I'm just going level by level, man. <laughs> level by level. You, you what go, we're going to have to do this week geez. when we practice these guys and we do inside run and we do uh, regular down and distance, the double teams – that we have have to be perfect. Yeah. Because if they're not, exposure, they're going to expose us. We're going to blow through some other names here, and we're going to get you guys up out of here. We're going to the third level, and you got, oh, gosh. Don't do it. Don't do it. They got Der- Derwin James is doing a hold in, so he's not yeah. playing. He might, explain, probably, that, explain that to the so fans. So hold out means that you don't show up to camp, but and they, they, and they get fined. Now right. guys have gotten smart and worked their way around it. Now they're like, I'm showing up to camp. I'm yeah. just not going to practice. Yeah, every so day I'm going to have something I'm gonna wrong. I'm going to have something wrong with me every right. practice. So now they can't find him. So he's looking for a new contract, so we probably won't have to worry about him, thank the Lord. Um, <laughs> well, going oh, out to, hold on, man. Oh, don't, don't, do that. Hold, don't do that. It's already it's already to praise God. It's, okay. it's already to praise God. But why you had to try to sneak that in there? Thank God he uh, ain't practicing. We hey, need all the great players. I hear you can get well, in practice. You about to get some because you got two yeah. All Pro cornerbacks out there. As the Cowboys keep talking about, what's their depth at receiver? You got J C Jackson who led the league in interceptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, not league interceptions. Uh, yeah, he's up there with interceptions. I think the last few years. And then you go over to Asante Samuel Jr. Nice. Okay, he's very nice, Nate. Very, very, very nice. Um. Okay, you go over to offense. Oh, geez. Oh, man. Rashawn Slater at, at, at tackle. Mm. No, brother. Keenan Allen at receiver. That, that, that is where – do you, where do you rate him as a receiver? I'm, I'm serious. Keenan Allen? Because when we go to talking about receivers, why his name is never mentioned? I don't know. He's, he's a, he, is a, he is a freaking pillar of consistency. Pillar of consistency. Mike Williams – Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, I read him. We, I'm going to put this away. Let, put me, this, let me say this here. Put this away, Nate. Wait, wait, where are you going with this? I'm not going. I just wanted to give people a preview of what's about to take place this week because the Cowboys have two practices against the Los Angeles Chargers. Let me say this. For all of you guys and girls out there that has the ability to stream, look, go to Chargerland. And see, could you pull up anything, Cowboys, out there when they practice? Okay. You know, okay. Yeah, check it out. Um, it was good talk, Nate. Good talk. I, I hope that people have a greater understanding now of the challenges that rookies have.
Preseason is not nice to most rookies. It's not. And it's not supposed to be pretty. Right. The same way that you say Terrence Steele is not a good practice player. Yeah. Preseason is not supposed to be pretty for rookies. Right. So, people, have some grace. And but patience. that grace after this game, that grace go away. <laughs> and, and, uh, let, me, let me, before you close us out, because I feel you finna close yeah, us I'm out. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. Who are your players you're watching this week? Get, you can go one or two, three. Those, offense, the, defense, those special team. Whatever. Offense alignment, that whole left side. Okay. And, and Tyler Smith and Josh Ball. We need to see some drastic right. improvement there. Right. If you I'm don't see you improvement with the left tackle position, you have to go. I don't know what vets are available because tackle is a highly touted position. Right. But you, if you don't see what you need to see this week out of Josh Ball in terms of improvement, you have to go get a guy. You have the patience with Tyler Smith because you knew what you were getting yourself into. And you got Connor McGovern. And you got Connor McGovern. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those guys specifically, the receiver position, I still need to see some more plays. I think that um, – Ben DiNucci actually came in and played really well. So, uh, I was very surprised at that as well. In, in a gunslinger mentality, that's who he is. Yeah, he has some plays that I, I yeah. wish I didn't see, but overall, right. he had a he had a pretty good game. Running game was good. We didn't hit on that. They right. they, they ran was, the ball well okay. on the ground. It was but okay. yeah, there's a number, number of things I'm looking for. I'm just, but the competition. To your point, the competition, the aggressiveness, the intent, all those things have to be very apparent that they're they're they've been talked about and went over right. many times. This is this kid. Let me make sure because I mess up a name, but I ain't messing up this name here. His name is Brandon Smith, a receiver. I, good kid. He's a good, good receiver. Made, well, made a big play. I know. I know it would take. By, by not gonna happen, Nate. Yeah, it's I not know. gonna happen, Nate. It's not, he they, made they, the practice squad because he flashed, and they'll try to hide him now because what? he already made one big play. So now the politics of the NFL. We're not gonna get into this today. Okay. All the right. politics of the NFL. That boy's made one. Flash play. Danucci dropped that thing in a bucket on him. He made yeah. a great catch on the sideline. Right. You won't see much of him the rest of the preseason. Okay. I, that's, that's, I called, just, that's called like hiding. Him, that's called hiding a player so that other teams don't see his abilities and don't come looking for him. The Cowboys want to like tuck him, him away man. and put him in their back pocket and then bring him out another yeah. day. Okay. Ugh, we're going to leave that alone. Hey. Y'all, that's another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. I hope that you guys have grace. I hope that you guys have patience. Continue to tune in and get the real. I that's I all. Not there with his grace, but that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about pregame meal either. Uh, hey, y'all, we'll see y'all next time on Let Me Tell You Something. Let me tell you something, Mom. <laughs>